here. We're at Extract Talks. Good to see you. We're obviously in Lab Day again today, so here we go. Uh, look at all this. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for being here. We're here. We're actually talking about installation today. Yeah, we thought we'd give you a, a little tour of the piece of equipment that people typically use. Show you what differences are in the different equipment. You know, there's a there's manual systems and there's automated systems. This particular one is an automated system. There's also a single wiper versus a two wiper system. This is a dual wiper system. So dual stage wipe film. Yeah. Tech with cold finger. With cold finger. Yeah. Let's just kind of go through some let's of the it. some of the items here. Yeah. So let's do the pull path first. Okay. That's, that's kind of a nice way to go. You fill this thing up. And uh, typically you can put what in there, seven, eight liters. It's all stainless steel, 316. All of the seals and everything, uh, they're either PTFE or they're uh, food grade high temperature silk and rubber. So there's two, two different types of seals. This also has what they call a, a sensor in the, the reservoir to tell you how much is left in it. So when you look at the HMI panel, which is over there, it'll give you an idea about how much is in there. Um, this is a gear pump. Of course, everything's traced with a hot liquid. And the gear pump moves the oil to be distilled yeah. from here, goes up here, and then into this white, first white film, okay? Now, a lot of people do their oil and they distill it in two stages, typically. One would uh, be to remove volatile, one would be able to remove like um, terpenes and things like that. And then they take the, what's called the residue from that first stage and then move it to the second stage. They're doing the and that's just running it, it could be running it through exactly the same machine. Yeah, Again. exactly. So they'll, they'll, do, they'll do one run and then they'll do another run. So if you only have one of these columns, you have to do all of the first stage first and then you stop clean off the system, yep. then you start with a, a second stage and then you just keep going. Now, the advantage of this particular unit is that it has the two stages put together. So you really don't need to uh, mess with, you know, taking the, uh, the residue from one stage and putting it in. It's, it's automatically going over there. This particular unit is not outfitted with mass flow sensors, but other units that we have have mass flow sensors on them. And the, that's pretty nice because you're able to really tell the flow rates for each one of these stages. And that, that's really nice if you want to understand mass balance um, and you want to be able to put that into a batch record and report it out on the system. So this is the type of system that will allow you to do that. Yeah, so the fluid comes in here and then this is the wiper and there's a wiper blade inside. It's good. Yeah. And it just kind of comes down and it, it dribbles down the outside. Now what's cool about this and about these designs is, are that uh, it's going to, the, the wiper blades actually wipe and create a thin film on the inside surface of this heated cylinder here. These heated cylinders, they can come in different sizes. This is the one, this is a, a six inch size here, but they, they can come in, you know, you can buy these in like huge, you know, like, yeah, like five, six meters in diameter. So they, but this is more like a pilot scale or a small scale production. This would be appropriate for your typical marijuana operation or uh, a hemp operation. That's you know you can add a couple of them in, put two of them in, and just just keep running. There's a cold finger. You can see it goes right up here through the center, and um, there's a you can see there's a cold there's a cold loop in there. That's actually freezing cold. I thought it should be cold. Um, what's nice about that is you can see. When it starts to evaporate from the hot surface on the outside, it's, it'll go into vacuum that's in here and it starts to condense on that cold finger that's up in the middle. It's pretty cool. It's what's called a short path distillation. A lot of people, when they think about short path, they think of a piece of glassware uh, with a receiver on it and things like that. Um, that's actually less of a short path than this is. Actually, it's short. short. It's very short, yeah. The, the distance between the wall here in the center is, is on the order of about an inch. So really what you're talking about is the distance between the evaporative surface here, the, the cold finger, cold. The, the condensing, right? And that's yep. like an inch. In, in a short path glassware apparatus, you have the evaporative surface in your bulb or in your glassware, and then way over here, maybe six or seven inches you know, far away is the evaporative or the condensing surface. So it's kind of a much longer short path length. All this is, guys, is the vacuum conditioning system. That's all it is. And um, it's just the vacuum conditioning system. Yeah, that's all. 
Well, the thing is, when you go down to really low vacuum, first of all, you want to have sensors on your system so you can tell, okay, hey, I'm at, I'm at the right vacuum level, right? Sure. So this is the sensor here. And of course, we, <clears throat> on this particular system, what's great about it is that we add in all of the um, you know, trending and all of that stuff. So if you are trying to troubleshoot from the standpoint of a, a vacuum you know, leak or something like that, you have on your HMI all the trends so you can actually say, hey, this is what it should be, and here it's not there, we got a leak in the system. So that's actually really valuable. Cool. Um, so actually there's two cold fingers. This is a recirculating cold finger right here. And you can see that the vacuum, um, there's some flow that goes this way, vacuum here, and it's starting to condense right here. And uh, you can see that that's what's condensing out of this cold finger. And then uh, there's a connection between this cold finger and this cold finger. And you can see there's a lot lighter um, terpenes coming out of there. Terps. <clears throat> now, neither of these terpenes are desirable from the standpoint of wanting to use them. It, it, they're, they're much higher molecular weight terpenes. Um, they are liquid, but they don't smell good, nor do they have a good flavor. They have no good aroma. They don't taste so you're not going to be able to use them in formulations. formulations. Okay. On this particular system, on both sides, we have a roughing pump and a turbo pump. Now, the roughing pump gets you down to, say, a millitor, maybe a, a, a hundred, a ten, a hundred tor, or something like that. Um, and then this uh, vacuum pump here, which is called a turbo pump, gets you down to even lower than that, ten to the minus three, ten to the minus four tor, which is a, a measure of vacuum. That's so cool. it's a really low vacuum. Now, one thing about this pump which is the roughing pump, a lot of people use um, inexpensive oil pumps. What's nice about this particular system is that we do have no oil. Oil less. It's oil way less. easier to clean, way you don't have to, I mean, no. Right, it's awesome, yeah. So a lot of times you have to, because the, you know, the oil gets stuff in it from the vacuum as it's pulling. So in this case, you don't need to change that out, which is really great. Um, you do have some maintenance to do on it occasionally, but you don't have to change out the oils on a regular basis. So that, that's essentially the vacuum system. And a lot of people wonder what I meant when I said flow, okay? It, it's not really like flow rate, okay? It's actually diffusion. And, um, the, and as, of course, uh, the vacuum goes lower and lower, um, you know, your diffusion uh, is, is going to be less and less hampered by all the other gas molecules that are in there. So you could say that migration or transport from here to here actually gets better as, as, as it goes through here. And you can see that's why you want these condensing fingers on there. Because this, all that stuff would have been in the vacuum. And you don't want that, right? Don't want it at all. Now, this side of the system, which is a terpene recovery system, usually you don't run the, the turbo back for that. Maybe typically, in a normal method, you're only running the roughing pump. Now we're going to go over here. Uh, we come out here and they're putting the residue directly into the second stage here, which is really great. Um, you know, then you don't have to handle it in between. It's automatic. So you're actually doing two runs in one, essentially. So from that standpoint, you're doing pretty good. So yeah, so this is, this is the second stage. And the process is exactly the same, <clears throat> except in this stage, you have the, the turbo pump running, which is really great, yeah. And you can see here's, here's stuff coming out of it right now. You can, um, this is the residue, and that's the actual product coming out of it, which is really great. And then here's some terpenes that are being, um, that are being you know, lifted up. Now, um, by the way, a lot of people wonder what, what, what do we have in here. Um, we use IPA and dry ice. And yeah. so it, it's just beer and ice, right? IPA. Uh, IPA, yeah, not that kind of IPA. Oh, okay. <laughs> on this system, it can run methods. So you can make up your method. You can run consistently the same method every time. You can change the method, name them. It has change control on the method, so it knows, hey, I've changed the method. You can know who ran the method, so usually people will beep themselves in, and that will um, come up here and be printed out here. Um, also, trending, all the methods associated with all the trending data. People have issues with consistency from equipment to equipment. Like, they'll have a first shift, they'll be running, and they'll get a completely different yeah. throughput than the second shift, okay? 
So, um, and a lot of that has to do with people running their own methods, you know, um, and actually if it's from the same lot, it shouldn't be a problem. And then you have employees who introduce their own methods, yeah. which is not good. Right. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, you want to be able to control the methods. And so that's really what the clear still allows you to do is, is to control the methods, load okay. methods. Also, it, it keeps track of all the data on a run basis. On, the, on a per run basis. So if I'm doing uh, 100 kilos of distillate through here, um, it'll keep care, track of all of the parameters. And, and I'll tell you what those parameters are. There are all the temperatures here, all the vacuums on both sides. It has also le level here and also mass flow on each of the pumps. Which That's a really big deal. So you're really able to tell, hey, I got this batch. I know who did it. I know what the method is. I know what all the data coming into that batch method is, so that you can try to get to some consistency and you can understand, hey, why is it that second shift or first shift is doing better or worse than the other? There's some other items on here. Obviously, there's a, a whole set of alarms and um, set points that the administrator can set on this piece of equipment, and they're really linked to the light and to an audible alarm. So I could, for example, uh, put an audible alarm when this got down to 25% and it would show me an audible alarm or it would turn from green to red. <clears throat> there's a bunch of configurations in there that uh, the administrator is allowed to do and then there's some configurations that the user is allowed to do. So, you know, just to keep it so that, hey, look, I, I'm running out of stuff. A lot of times you can set this stuff thing up, let it run. Um, and you can go do something else, and then when you hear the beep or the buzzer or see the light, you're able to really say, hey, I gotta, I gotta pay, pay attention now. So one of the questions that I get is, can you, can, can you add more product while it's running, or do you have to wait for the cycle to complete before you, adding you more? You definitely can add more product while it's running. Continuous. So it's continuous, so if you have a big batch, you can do, you can do that continuously. Um, yeah, if you want to, if you want to do a four pass, you could even do a four pass by just putting this stuff back in. Just yeah. loop it back. Right. And even with this, what we found is when people are running Canapass 1, Canapass 2, Canapass 3 on a traditional uh, distillation machine, uh, we're finding that just one pass through this because it's dual stage and it's not hitting atmosphere, we're finding that you're getting up to 20 to 30 percent higher yield with one pass through the dual stage system. Yeah. Lots of time efficiency and a higher yield. So you're saving cost and you're improving your yield. Fine. Right. Now, a lot of people also ask, okay, what's the throughput on a system like this? And, you know, that that is a, it's a complicated question. Anybody who's run a short path knows, okay, you have parameters, right? You have where you're going to cut. In other words, what's the ratio between this side and that side? You set that with your method. Okay, and then what's the purity I want off the end? So yeah. you set the purity, and the less the purity, the greater the throughput, essentially. And that's all going to shift depending on what you put in here. Yeah, so that's, and that, that's going to shift with, yeah. So if you have a large batch, you can kind of, um, you, know, you run it under the same method. That'll at least say, hey, I know, I know from my batch record that everything's the same, and uh, nothing's going to change there. At least then I'll know the difference is an output is the variation on the output coming from the input materials, or is it coming from my operators, or is it coming from the methods, yeah. or is it coming from the temperature or the vacuum, all that stuff. So there's an endless number of parameters you want to try to control, and this system really allows you to, to, to do that. Now, that's what we call automation, okay? Automating, first of all, the transfer from first stage to second stage, automating the mass flow rates, automating all that stuff so that you can really, really control your system. That's well, fundamental the uh, testing, GMP operation. Absolutely. Automating the testing, making sure that everything is regulated well with temperature, with vacuum, with pressure. With yeah. Vacuum. Yeah. Huge. This is awesome. Um, it's kind of fun to see all the stuff inside. Did you get it? Did you show them what's in the buckets? Yeah. So, yeah. That's resin, and this is the final product. You can see that that final product already starting, it's so concentrated, it's starting to crystallize all already. Like it crystallizes. Oh, yeah. Unless it's, Unless it's more. Right. Yeah. So the other thing that's on this system that we didn't really talk about, but I'll mention to you, is that on our, all of our standard systems, we have laser-based motor control. 
and a lot of people don't have that, and nobody has that I, that I know of, we do. Um, and the, the reason is because you want to be able to um, automate when the pumps are turning on and off and the RPMs of those. So um, we have a laser-based system that we implement on this particular piece of equipment, along with uh, you know an input sensor for uh, ultrasonic sensor for the input on the, the level sensor, okay? So we have sensors in there. It's important for you to use those sensors along with the mass flow sensors to, to really you know, control your system. And that gives new meaning to herding kittens because with the lasers flying, the kittens just go crazy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, guys. So this has uh, been a good time, and uh, well I done. hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you got any questions on, you know, you need one of these babies in your uh, in your laboratory, yeah. you know, give us call a call. Us. Call us. Set up a CBD jam session, whatever. And uh, we, we, if you have questions about comparison, just let us know. This is a kick-ass piece of machinery, and we're ready to do it. Also, we've got extra uh, guides on distillation, and we also have a flow. Our chief animator and uh, videographer, James, put together a really cool flow on how this works internally from an animation standpoint. Very, very cool. Yeah, so go to YouTube, check out the video. Please subscribe. Uh, push the subscribe button, and... Uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week. I appreciate Thank you. you for see joining you us. Yeah, well take done. care. Yeah. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20 minute CBD jam session. A CBD jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale-up plan based on your needs, and help you make your processing goals a reality, all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20-minute CBD Jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is one 651 six zero 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 three six